Uh, that's it. We're all out of turkey sandwiches unless you want to use my ship's replicator for one. Thanksgiving is officially over and now the holiday season. <coughs> replicator? I thought that was Star Trek. What is it with you and Star Trek? Can't I just have an easy way to make meals in deep space? Look at... whatever. Well, I guess this means I can finally bring out my Christmas content. Gonna be rough since you blew through all the Charlie Browns last year, huh? Au contraire, mon frere. I've been thinking of using this as an opportunity to explore a few new avenues for my channel, and I got just the thing. The Garfield Christmas Special? The Garfield Cri I mean the Simpsons Christmas Special. Yep, that's what I had planned all along. You were gonna do Garfield, weren't you? No, shut up! Uh, t go get my projector. He'll probably do it next week. Hey everyone, it's the Koopa Man. What can I say that hasn't been said about The Simpsons? From its glorious beginnings, its middling middle, and the shambling corpse of a franchise it is today, there really isn't much that can be said that hasn't already been said before. Still though, going back and watching those old episodes, you really see why this series took America by storm back in its day. Brainchild of Mac Groening and James L. Brooks, The Simpsons started its life as a series of sketches on The Tracy Ullman Show before being picked up by the Fox Network for its own series. And what better way to kick off The Simpsons mania than at this most joyous time of the year when in December of 1989 they were set to debut their first episode, Some Wonderful Evening. Yeah, that's right, they planned to show another episode entirely, but it ran into production issues, so they opened with the Christmas special they already had done. This is... Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. As I said, this episode was not intended to be aired in Christmas of 1989, rather its copyright date is for December of 1990, but because of production and scheduling issues, this was the first full episode of The Simpsons ever aired. It opens up with Homer and Marge Simpson, along with Baby Maggie, are on their way to Springfield Elementary's Christmas pageant. On their way, Homer makes gripes about how he got dragged into it, showcasing his character being not quite father of the year material like most sitcom dads at the time. You see, at that time, in the late 80s and early 90s, sitcoms were becoming a bit formulaic, all some variation of the feel-good hallmark schmaltz like Family Matters or Full House or The Cosby Show. Graining, Brooks, and a third Simpson godfather known as Sam Simon set out to make some that was the exact opposite of that with The Simpsons, and for its time, it worked. Although in hindsight, maybe it worked a little too well, as while The Simpsons started out as a subversion to the formula, it eventually became the formula itself, with many taking inspiration to its more cynical tones and hijinks, such as Family Guy, American Dad, The Cleveland Show, most of the animated career of Seth MacFarlane actually, but also Dilbert, Bob's Burgers, Duckman, The Critic, and many others. Heck, it even got to a point where The Simpsons would lampoon pop culture, only to become pop culture itself and eventually embrace it to a masturbatory level. Whereas in earlier seasons, celebrities would be lampooned relentlessly, we would eventually get episodes like Beyond Blunderdome or When You Dish Upon a Star, which would embrace celebrities shamelessly. That would lay the foundation for what would be the objective worst Simpsons episode to date and what most people see as the final nail in the coffin, Lisa Goes Gaga, but I digress. We see Lisa perform in the pageant as some sort of South Sea Santa figure, but the real star of the scene is Bart who introduces the world to, as he put it, this generation's Dennis the Menace. The uh, fourth grade will favor us with a melody, uh, medley, <laughs> of holiday flavorists. Dancing through the snow, in one heart's up and sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way, ha ha ha, bells on the tail ring, making sure it's Isn't Bart sweet, Homer? He sings like an angel. Oh, jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin lays an egg, the Batmobile broke its wheel, the Joker got a whoop, ah! Of course, over time, Bart's antics would go from harmless class clownery to borderline sociopathic homicidal tendencies. But that happened to a lot of characters on the show. In fact, the show created the name for when this occurs in media, Flanderization. To summarize, Flanderization occurs when certain traits about a character become, over time, exaggerated to the point where they overtake the character itself. This was named for Ned Flanders, who over time went from a happy-go-lucky good-natured Christian man to the show stand-in for a Bible thumper, abandoning all other traits he had over time. Many characters on The Simpsons, including the main family, suffer from this, which is in large part why the show decayed over time. But again, I digress. Later in the Simpson home, the kids are writing their letters to Santa, Bart asking for a tattoo which he's forbidden from getting, and Lisa for a pony because she used to have a character outside of being a leftist liberal mouthpiece. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, I'll try to stay focused. Meanwhile, Marge writes the Christmas letter where we get a bit of continuity when she mentions the passing of the family's cat Snowball and their adoption of Snowball 2. Marge's sisters, Patty and Selma, call, rudely ignoring Homer who answers the phone, telling Marge that they'll be coming for the holidays. This aggravates Homer because they're always quite rude to him no matter how hard he tries, and while Homer's no saint, in the early episodes he does at least try with them. Homer then takes the kids out to light up their Christmas lights, which end up being a dud. At least he tried. To make matters worse, his next door neighbor Ned Flanders lights up his display and it's practically perfect, which makes Homer envious and frustrated. The next day, Homer goes to work while Marge takes the kids to the mall to do some Christmas shopping with the money they saved up all year. However, things take a turn for the worse when Homer's boss, Mr. Burns, announces he's cancelled the Christmas bonuses. And unlike National Lampoon, Cousin Eddie doesn't kidnap him and make him change his mind, so Homer is up a creek without a paddle. And then Bart lies about his age to get a tattoo which Marge needs to spend all the rest of their Christmas savings to get removed, leading to the family having no money left for Christmas. Homer doesn't tell his family about the cancelled bonuses and instead takes a job as a mall Santa to bring some extra money in so he can save Christmas, all while doing his best to provide a holiday for his family, even going so far as to steal a Christmas tree from an out-of-town tree farm. Bart eventually finds out Homer has been working as a Santa and keeps it secret till Homer gets paid, but because of our good friends at the IRS, his pay has been reduced to a mere 13 bucks. Homer's friend Barney suggests they bet it at a dog track, having an inside tip about a sure winner. They go there, but instead of betting it on the dog Barney suggested, Homer puts it all on the last minute entry, Santa's little helper, believing it to be a sign. Unfortunately, this is not that kind of show and Homer loses everything. Later in the parking lot, however... Read it! Scram! Get lost! You came in last for the last time! Look, Dad, it's Santa's little helper. And don't come back! Oh, no, you don't. No, no, get away from me. Uh-uh. Oh, can we keep him, Dad, please? But he's a loser. He's pathetic. He's a Simpson. Homer is disappointed to tell his family what happened and there'd be no Christmas, but Bart turns around and shows everyone their new dog. It seems that in spite of them not having much, they at least have each other, and that's what Christmas is really about. The special closes with the family seeing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer over the credits. And that's The Simpsons' very first episode. While it does have the trademark Simpson cynicism, it also has a lot of heart and is a very good Christmas special, and an even better series premiere episode. The Christmas episodes of The Simpsons would become sort of a tradition of being some of the best episodes in the series, with others including Marge Be Not Proud, Holidays of Futures Past, and Tis the 15th Season. Granted, there are also a few duds like Skinner's Sense of Snow, which barely has any Christmas seeming and may as well be just any other winter episode, or She of Little Faith, where at least became a Buddhist and started her past to becoming insufferable. Though, to be fair, some of the Buddhists I've known also think Lisa Simpson sucks. Anyway, the episode is on DVD box sets of The Simpsons and is aired on Fox and its affiliate channels each year and, of course, is available on Disney+. Plus. So, go give it a watch. You're sure to enjoy it. Anyway, this has been the Koopa Man. Game on.